Hey guys, my name is Jacob Wall. I am the marketing and sales representative here at Wall to Wall Software. And yes, you heard my last name correctly. I am the son of Roy Wall, who is the founder of this company. So today, we're gonna to be talking about the TWW search box. This is a component that you can find within our product, Firepower, which uses the library of FireMonkey. So stay tuned for that. Now, what does the search box do for you? Well, the Firepower search box can be used on the desktop or mobile devices and allows you to define one or more fields that are automatically searched for in your data set. And then you could even customize this further by changing the search method, the search style, and editing the search fields. So you could filter out specifically what you would want to search for and what you don't want to pop up when you're searching for something. And you're able to customize this with easily just a drop down menu, click a couple of clicks and right there you can change it exactly to what works best for you and your end user. So here's an example of what the search box would look like. So right here we can see that this is the demo that you can download on our website and it comes with it in our firepower. So you can also see for yourself and mess around with it. But right now I am on the filtering one, which we'll show you right here. So if I type in, let's say Alaska, it's gonna automatically filter out everything else that does not relate to Alaska or if even just Alask or Alas, right? It's just gonna automatically filter as you type. And you can change that as well within Firepower by editing the actual um, field through the object inspector. But right now, you can see that when I type that, it filters it out and I see these two companies. However, if I, now let's say, let's see, let's look at Alaska real quick. Alaska, we have cruise lines, right? If I type in cruise, it's not gonna pop up because the way that this demo is running is that it's going, uh, if it starts to filter from the start, it will not filter anywhere, but you can change that as well. But right now this is set that it's starting from that. So we will be able to change that and I'll show you how to change that. But this is just an example of what the search box can do and how it's so easy for your end user just to look up information that they need, but they also might have their own preferences. Maybe they don't want it to just search from anywhere. Maybe they want to search from the start because that's easier and that's how their brain works. Or maybe they do want to search from anywhere and so you can change that literally by just a couple of clicks. And so now let's look at how you can integrate this into your own application. Now I'm gonna show you how you can add the TWW search box to your own application. So what we're gonna do first is we are going to go to File, New, and then click on Multi-Device Application, which will be using the library of FireMonkey. And I already have opened that. And if you download a Firepower, either a free trial or with an actual purchase of the product, once you install that, it will be added to your palette. So we go to the palette and we go to TWW Data Grid. I'm going to add that. And I am also going to add the TWW search box. Now, one thing is really important is I'm going to, for this example, I'm going to be using a TFD mem table to just load in uh, examples of data set that I have. But you, I, I'm sure, have your own data set that you know how to link to, and I will let you. Uh, do that. But for this example, I'm going to add a TFD mem table. I then need to make sure that this TFD mem table has a data set. So I will use my customer data set that I have. And then I will add a bind source. This bind source is very crucial. If you don't have the bind source, you cannot link it to your search box or your data grid for this example. I will now align the search box at the top and then I will align the data grid to the client. Now, the only thing that is missing from here right now is I need to make sure that this data grid is connected or the data source is connected to the bind source. So I add that, I go to data source under the object inspector, I clicked on data grid, go to data source, click on bind source DB12 or whatever name maybe that you have. And I need to do the same thing for the search box. So click on the search box, go to the object inspector, and then go to data source. One last step before it actually starts to work is I need to go to edit search fields. 
on the search box. So I clicked on the search box, edit search fields, and I need to add fields. If I don't have these fields, it doesn't know what to filter out or even what to look for as I type in characters. So I'm going to add customer number, buyer, company name, first name, and a last name. So if I press OK, close that, and I just do F9, I can now start to actually uh, use a search box. It's going to be a little picky, and I'll show you what I mean. But right now, let's say if I type in giant plumbing, it shows up, right? Same issue, though, within the demo that I mentioned earlier is that if I just type plumbing, it's not going to show up because right now the search method is not from anywhere. It is right now only from the start. So anything, if I just try to type a word within the middle, that's not going to show up, only if I start from scratch. I also could do the same thing if I do no because I did buyer, right? I could do customer number three, four, eight. That would also pop up. And so just like that, you already have a search box working. But I now want to go into a little more detail and show you some cool things that you can do with just a couple of clicks that will now let you to change your search box to make it easier for you. So we go to the search box. And one thing that's really important that I, I would make sure if I ever had to program this for an end user because most people are used to this, but you need to go to filter properties. Click this drop down here and go to like supported upper keyword and make that true. This now will allow your program, your search box to be case insensitive. So rather than me having to type a capital G for giant to make sure that pops up, I now can just type lowercase g and still, if I type the word giant with a lowercase g, the company for giant plumbing will show up. That's one step that is really important. I think many customers will need that, but again, if you don't want that, with just one click, you can make it false and then make it case sensitive. So we were able to change this through the search box filter properties, but your backend may not necessarily support upper keyword. And so make sure to change it through your data set if you're having any issues with going through the search box. Next, we want to make sure that when we go to the search fields, we want to make sure that these are all set to SBFMT match anywhere. In the demo that you saw, and even earlier, you saw that it was on start, and that when I would type something, it would only filter out the words that it started with. So giant plumbing, it would only, if I typed giant, it would work. If I typed plumbing, it would not. So that's what we have to make sure that you want to change this to match anywhere. And you go that by clicking on the search box, edit search fields, highlight all of these search fields, and then change it from the object inspector. Because now once you do that and they're SBF MT match anywhere, we can now run the program. And it should allow us to now type a word that's not at the start and filter that out. So if I go to plum, what we now have giant plumbing that applies right here. So this is really helpful and something that's really important for your customer or for the end user. The end user may want it to be at the start. Some people like work that way and their brains work like that and that's important. So you can easily change that with just a couple of clicks. So thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe our channel and then share this with your other programmers and maybe even other end users who are curious about adding a component like this to their own database or to their own program that you've created for them. And if you haven't used Firepower, or if you're just curious in it, make sure to download our free trial that you can find on our website and just explore all of this. This is just one of the components that we offer, but it allows you to drag and drop from the palette, making that you don't have to do any programming, saving you a lot of time. So make sure to watch our next video that we will be releasing soon, and I hope to see you next time.